Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. Based on some requests, I wanted to show you all how I antique pieces with liver of sulfur gel. Now I have done a previous tutorial on how I antique stuff with this other product, uh, Midas Black Max from Rio Grande. Um, so you can check out that tutorial if you want. I do prefer the Midas for silver pieces, because um, it's really so quick and easy. But uh, liver of sulfur, I feel like, just gives a nicer finish on copper overall, so I prefer using this for copper. And basically what this does is it accelerates the antiquing process that would naturally occur on metals like silver, copper, or bronze. So it's uh, adding a layer of patina that darkens the surface of the metal. Um, so as you can see here, here's a copper piece that is raw and untreated. It's a very bright uh, kind of reddish metallic finish. And then here's one that I have treated with liver of sulfur to darken up the crevices and then I have gone over and uh, polished it to bring out the highlights on the raised bits. So kind of a different look there. A lot of people like the more dimensional high contrast look um, from pre-antiquing it. And if I were to leave this anchor here um, or just wear it you know, normally for a month or two, it would eventually start to look like this piece that I have pre-antiqued and polished. Now before we get started, uh, I want to do a disclaimer. There are lots of other videos out there on YouTube for how to uh, antique or patina pieces using liver of sulfur. Uh, probably a lot of them are by much more experienced people than myself. Uh, so this is just a quick take on how I personally use liver of sulfur to antique my pieces and I hope you guys might find it helpful. If not, again, there are a ton of other videos out there uh, that you can check out as well. And they might show you a slightly different method. There are different ways to do this, uh, but this is just the way I do it. So you want to have a few things on hand as we get started. You're going to need two glass or plastic bowls or containers. You're also going to need some uh, just regular baking soda. And you'll need a few plastic utensils. I like to use a disposable plastic fork and spoon. If you have plastic tongs or something, that would also work very well, but I just find these are cheap and easy to do. And you're also going to want some uh, disposable plastic gloves to protect your skin. And of course your uh, liver of sulfur. So I'm going to be using a gel formulation for liver of sulfur. You can get this in a solid form as well, uh, which might have a little bit better shelf life in terms of your, your liver of sulfur not degrading. But I feel like the gel is just easier to use overall, so I go with this. And I'll leave a link in the description section below for where you can purchase some of this if you are interested in that. And then the only other thing you need is some hot water. I like to use my electric kettle here to boil some water. Then I let it sit for, I don't know, 5 to 10 minutes because you want it hot but not actually boiling. Um, so what happens is if you are actually boiling the water, your liver of sulfur will become deactivated by the boiling water. Uh, but if you're antiquing silver with it, you do need hot water to actually make it work. Uh, copper, you can get away with using cooler water. It might just take a little bit longer for the reaction to take place. So I kind of shoot for somewhere between warm and hot for my water. So again, like I said, I love doing copper with this particular product. Um, you can also use this to antique or patina uh, silver and bronze. It does not work so well on brass uh, because brass does not react with the sulfur as well. It'll kind of darken it up a little bit, but it won't give you that nice dark finish. So as we get started, just a note on safety, safety a liver of sulfur is a mild acid and it can kind of burn your skin a little bit. So I will be wearing gloves and the fumes can also be slightly toxic, so you want to make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area or outdoors or wearing a mask or, uh, you know, just something else to watch that you're not breathing in the fumes. So I'm just going to put my gloves on. And I'm using uh, nitrile gloves because I have a little bit of a latex sensitivity, but you can use, um, you know, reusable plastic gloves, nitrile gloves, latex gloves, whatever you have on hand. And we're going to need a few glass or plastic containers. Um, I'm going to have a largish bowl here and then this one cup wide mouthed canning jar. Um, you can again use glass or plastic, just make sure you avoid using metal containers for sure. And you can use, you know, any 
containers you like, just make sure you mark them and reserve them for use for liver of sulfur that you don't, you know, wind up eating food out of them or whatever. Um, and there is a benefit to using a uh, something with a lid for the actual sulfur solution, and I'll explain what that benefit is later. A lot of people like to use kind of wide uh, Tupperware dishes with the snap-on lids. As long as the opening is big enough to fit in the jewelry pieces that you're wanting to oxidize uh, or patina, then you're pretty much good to go. And I'm just going to be doing this piece here and some little braided hoop earrings. So I'll be uh, adding a patina to these today. Um, I am thinking about potentially doing a tutorial on how to make these guys, but let me know if you're interested in that and which one you want me to do first, potentially. And before you get started, you do want to make sure that your pieces are very clean. Uh, of course, as you're making your jewelry, you're, you're handling it, and your hands have a little bit of a, you know, natural oil on them and dirt, and so that will actually prevent the liver of sulfur solution from forming the patina evenly on the surface. So you might get weird, you know, splotchy discoloration. So you want to make sure you clean your pieces before treating them. And uh, one easy way to do that is just get a really soft, cheap toothbrush, a little bit of dish soap, uh, and under some warm water, just give them a good scrubbing off. Of course, if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can throw them in there with some warm water and dish soap. And as you can see, my piece does have Swarovski crystals in it here. You do want to check if these stones on the piece you want to patina are safe to put in liver of sulfur, um, depending on the hardness and porosity level of the stone. It could be damaged either by the hot water required for the process or by the liver of sulfur itself. So you want to, uh, you know, kind of do a Google search based on whatever specific stone you might have in your work. Uh, as a rule of thumb, the harder the stone is, the more likely it is to hold up. Um, so some ones that Mm, I would avoid using liver of sulfur on or turquoise, pearl, that kind of thing. And uh, if you want to patina those sorts of pieces, just go through the same process, but instead of submerging your piece in the liver of sulfur solution, you can take a Q-tip or a paintbrush or something and just carefully paint the solution on, avoiding your stones. So before we begin, what we're going to do is take this bowl right here, and you're going to dump in a good amount of just regular old baking soda. You don't really have to go by specific measurements. I usually add about a tablespoon or so, and then we're going to add some hot water to this. And you want just enough that you'll be able to submerge your jewelry in there later. And I'm going to stir that up with a plastic spoon. And we're going to set that aside. We'll use that in a little bit. And go ahead and open up your liver of sulfur, again using a plastic spoon, not a metal one. We're just going to take about a pea-sized portion. You don't need a lot. In fact, that might even be a little more than I need. I generally do about a pea-sized portion for one cup of water. And then I'm just going to pour my hot but not boiling water on there to rinse it off the spoon. I'm just going to add enough that I can again submerge my jewelry in there. And you want this solution to be a rich yellow color, but not like dark brown. Let me put, put some white under there. So this is kind of the intensity of color you're going for. You don't want it to be too pale, and you don't want it to be brownish. So kind of a rich yellow. And I might even add a little bit more water. And if you have your solution too weak, what'll happen is it just doesn't get the dark color you want. It'll take too long to act on your piece. And if you have it too strong, that's also an issue because it can actually make uh, such a thick, aggressive layer of patina that it starts flaking off and uh, it's just kind of nasty. So you want that happy middle ground. So now, very simply, all we're going to do is drop our pieces in the liver of sulfur solution. And you want to make sure they are completely beneath the surface there, and it's going to take a few minutes to act, uh, depending on the strength of your solution. You may see your pieces go through a range of colors, you know, starting out with green, going to brown, blue, and then what you're looking for is this nice grayish black color. Once it is the desired color, I like to lift it out with a fork, a plastic fork. Um, you can use plastic tongs if you have them, and we're just going to dump it in that baking soda neutralizing solution we made. 
and that will stop the liver of sulfur from working on it once it's at the desired doneness level. And we'll just let those sit in there for a minute. It only takes a few seconds really, but I want to talk about uh, what you do with the solution after you're done using it. So you can store this if you like. You can put a lid on it and um, I'd say for maybe up to 48 hours you can reuse this. It does start to degrade as soon as the, the liver of sulfur comes in contact with air or water. Um, and as it degrades, basically the solution will start to turn clear and you'll get some um, kind of chalky precipitate at the bottom. Um, so that is actually one great way to dispose of this because you don't want to dump this solution as is down the drain. Uh, it could be a hazard to your pipes and your plumbing, so you don't want to do that. Uh, what you can do is just put a lid on this, set it somewhere out of the way. You know if you wind up wanting to treat a few more pieces tomorrow, you can gently reheat this a little bit and try oxidizing. You might need to make a fresh solution depending on how much it has decayed, but if you leave it sitting there until the solution turns perfectly clear, it has uh, automatically, you know, broken down to where it will be safe to put down the drain. Now, if you don't want this sitting around in your house or apartment or whatever, you might want to speed that up. So what you can do to neutralize this is, again, just dump a bunch of baking soda in it. It'll bubble up and foam. You want to uh, keep adding baking soda and waiting a few seconds until it's not bubbling anymore. At that point, it will again be completely neutralized and safe to wash down your drain. So for your pieces that have neutralized in this baking soda bowl here, you can just pull them out. They're totally safe to handle at this point without the gloves, uh, but I'm going to keep the gloves on because I'm lazy. <laughs> and what we're going to do now is just wash these off under some running water to remove the baking soda grit that might be on them. So I've washed these off uh, just to remove that baking soda and as you can see it is very different than what we started with. It's a really pretty dark grayish brown color now. So there are a couple different things you can do. You can use just regular old fine grit steel wool to rub the surface off. You can also use a steel brush like this. Uh, but my favorite thing is actually these, I believe they're called Pro Polish Pads, and you can get packs of, you know, 50 or so for pretty cheap. I'll leave a link in the description section below for where you can buy some of these. Uh, and these are basically like a mildly abrasive pad um, with cleaning chemicals embedded in it. So this will remove tarnish really well. They work great for just cleaning silver pieces. And they also work really great for removing patina, like I said. I do recommend wearing gloves when you use these or washing your hands off really well afterwards because of the chemicals in them, you know, that can get on your hands and it's probably not good to have on your skin for a long period of time or to rub in your eyes. Uh, but basically what I do is I kind of fold this over so I have a little surface to work with and I just start scrubbing off the surface here. And as you can see, it is lifting out really nicely all the detail by polishing off the raised bits. And you can kind of use that edge you've created by bending it to get in the, in the little cracks. And if there's a really stubborn crack that you want to get in, you can actually use the edge of it just like that or the corner of it. Of course, you could also use a polishing bit on a Dremel or other rotary tool to finish it off at this stage. So there's that, and I'll just show you what it would look like uh, to use your steel brush or steel wool would probably have the same effect. So let me go to a different spot and show you with the brush what it looks like. I feel like the brush does not uh, give it as bright or warm of a finish. Actually, let me do it on a different one so I can compare. And uh, wearing gloves while you do this will keep you from getting that nasty black stuff on your fingers, so I do recommend that. So that's with the brush, and 
this is on the left is with the uh, polishing pad. So as you can see that kind of gives you a brighter, warmer finish than this does. So that's why I just prefer the pads, but you can use whatever method you want. So basically you would go along the whole rest of the surface, finishing it all off. And that is what you wind up with. So there you go. As you can see, there is a big difference from what we started with. I just think the liver of sulfur patina treatment adds this amazing uh, depth and just kind of richness to copper. I, I really enjoy using it. It's a lot of fun and you get some really neat finishes uh, using it. Now, if for whatever reason you aren't happy with your piece after you patina it, uh, don't panic. You can easily undo it. Um, for copper, uh, a lot of people really swear by actually just putting your piece in ketchup and letting it soak overnight, pulling it out, scrubbing it off with a toothbrush. Uh, the ketchup, for whatever reason, will lift that oxidation and the patina off of your piece, restoring it to a nice shiny finish like new. And you can, you know, retreat it if something went wrong or just keep it shiny if you, if you decide you like it better that way. Uh, for silver pieces that you've treated, I would recommend doing a technique where you put it in a bowl with a little bit of crumpled up aluminum foil, you sprinkle some baking soda on that, and then you pour hot near boiling water on top of it, let it sit for five to ten minutes, uh, pulling it out with tongs so you don't burn yourself rinsing it off. The um, aluminum foil and baking soda will react to transfer the patina uh, from your silver to the aluminum foil so your silver will be shiny again. And uh, if you're curious about that process, I could make a tutorial showing you how to do that. Comment below if you're curious about having a video on that. But anyway, as you're wearing these antiqued patented pieces, you will find that the raised portions which you've polished start to darken and look more like the creviced portions over time. That's totally normal and fine. You can easily restore it by, again, you know, polishing off with your polishing or jewelry cleaning pad. Um, if you want to protect your piece, keep it looking like this forever. You can seal it with a clear finish or lacquer of some sort. Uh, I don't tend to like those because they do wear off over time. And then you can get, you know, weird flaky bits of this lacquer peeling off. So I usually just uh, go with the treatment and the polish and then let nature take its course and repolish it as needed. So one final note on uh, storing your liver of sulfur. I recommend putting it in a sealed plastic bag because you never know, sometimes these jars will leak. So I like to store mine. I get all the air out of there that I can, and I seal it shut, and that will help to make it last longer. You can go ahead and stick this in the refrigerator or freezer if you want. I find that's overkill. I've had this guy for over a year, and it's still a nice, rich, dark color. So I don't think it's going old at all. Um, when you need to worry about it is if it starts turning like a paler, col paler color, excuse me, that would indicate that your liver of sulfur is deteriorating and may have lost a little bit of its potency. So that is storage. Anyway, I hope you found this video on using liver of sulfur helpful. Uh, if you run into any issues, please comment below. Uh, if you have any questions, I would love to talk with you guys down there. Thanks so much for watching and happy crafting!